using the square root result from part one, we want to look at another factorization of invertible matrices. Earlier, when we studied the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization procedure, we applied it to the columns of a real invertible n by n matrix, and we were able to show that we could factor that matrix as an orthogonal matrix times an upper triangular matrix. If instead we use complex numbers, we just need to replace the orthogonal matrix with a unitary matrix. Now for here, our factorization will be a little bit different. So, will the A be an invertible n by n matrix over the complex numbers? We want to show that we can write A as P times X uniquely, where P is unitary, so P conjugate transpose times P is the identity matrix, and X is Hermitian positive definite. So, that means if we take X times V, inner product with V, that's always real and positive. Now, here I'm using the standard Hermitian inner product on CN, and we note we've shown that this condition here implies that X is Hermitian. Now, to motivate how we proceed, we look at the one by one case. That is, the invertible one by one matrices over C, or C star, the non zero complex numbers. If we take a non zero Z, we can write that in its polar decomposition as R times E the i theta. R is a positive real number. E the i theta is on the unit circle. That exhibits the decomposition we're looking for. Here, E the i theta is our unitary factor. Okay, if we take E the i theta times E the i theta star, that's just complex conjugation. We get one, which is our identity. R, which is positive, corresponds to a one by one Hermitian positive definite matrix. Now, there's common ground here with our other factorization. In that case, we still use E the i theta as the unitary factor, but now R is gonna stand in for our upper triangular matrix. Now, how do I proceed to decompose a complex number? So this is gonna be our blueprint for how we factor our matrix. First, we're gonna solve for R. So I'll take Z times its complex conjugate. That gives us the modulus squared, which is R squared. So if I want R, I just take the square root of Z bar times Z. If we think in terms of matrices, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna take A star times A, and then we're gonna take the positive definite square root from part one. Once we have our R, I can find the unitary part by just multiplying our Z times R inverse. So we're gonna find the square root of A star times A, and then multiply our A on the right by the inverse of that square root. First, let's show the factorization exists. So by our scheme, instead of considering Z bar Z, we consider A star A. Now, A star A is Hermitian positive definite. To see that, if we consider the inner product of A star AV with V, we can push the A star to the other side as an A. And then in this inner product, we have the A is invertible. So the only way AV is equal to zero is if V itself is zero. That means this inner product is positive unless V is equal to zero. So that's our Hermitian positive definite. Now, because of that, A star A has a unique Hermitian positive definite square root. So I'll call that S. Let's list some properties of S that we'll need. First, S squared is equal to A star A. It's just the definition of being the square root. Then S is invertible. Okay, if we take the determinant of both sides here, on this side I have the determinant of S squared. On the other side, we have the determinant of A, which is non-zero because A is invertible. And then we have determinant of A star is just the complex conjugate of the determinant of A. So that's also non-zero. So determinant of S is non-zero, so S is invertible. Then 
because a star a is equal to s squared, a star a is going to commute with s. We'll also have a star a commutes with s inverse. Finally, okay, well, we restate s is Hermitian, so s star equals s, but we also have that s inverse star is equal to s inverse, so s inverse is also Hermitian. Now, we have the positive definite factor for a factorization. Let's get the unitary part. So we're going to define p equal to a times s inverse. Okay, in our schema that was e to the i theta equals z times r inverse. So we follow our nose to show that p is unitary. So I consider p star p. If we apply star to a product, then the rule is you reverse the order, star each term. So we'll have s inverse star times a star. Then, because s inverse commutes with a star a, we could push it through. And then I have the s inverse star is equal to s inverse. So we get an s to the minus 2 out in front. Now, s to the minus 2 is equal to s squared to the minus 1. s squared is equal to a star a. So we're going to have a star a inverse times a star a so that's going to collapse to give us the identity matrix. So that means P star P is the identity, or P is unitary. Now, if we push the S inverse to the other side as an S, that gives me the A is equal to P times S, where P is unitary. S is Hermitian positive definite. So our factorization exists. Now, we also have the factorizations unique. So let's suppose I write it with another P prime and S prime. So P prime is unitary, S prime is Hermitian positive definite. Well, we're just going to consider A star A again, but with this factorization. So again, we're going to take the star of P prime S prime. So I reverse the order, star each term. We have S prime star, P prime star times P times S prime. P prime star times P. It's going to be the identity. Okay, we're assuming that P prime is unitary. So that leaves me with S prime squared because S prime star is equal to S prime. Now, S prime squared is equal to A star A. So that means that S prime is going to be a Hermitian positive definite square root of A star A. But that's unique. We've already found that and that's S. So that means that s is equal to s prime. If we take this equation here, multiply both sides by s inverse, we're left with p is equal to p prime. So the factorization we had here was just the factorization that we had before, p times s. So our factorization is unique. For a concrete example, we'll let a be equal to 2 squared to 2, 2 squared to 2, minus square root of 2, square root of 2. We form a star a. That's equal to 10, 6, 6, 10. Termitian, because the matrix is real symmetric. It's positive definite because the eigenvalues are 4 and 16. Now, we've already computed the square root of this matrix in part 2. That was s equal to 3, 1, 1, 3. Okay, again, it's Hermitian since it's real symmetric. It's positive definite because the eigenvalues are 2 and 4. Now, our recipe for finding the unitary factor in A, we take A times S inverse. So we calculate this, we get square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2, minus square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. If we take the transpose of this matrix, which is the same as the conjugate transpose, that'll be equal to P inverse. So that means P is unitary. That gives us our factorization for A as a unitary times a Hermitian positive definite matrix.